How's it going lads? It's summertime at the minute and that means stockpiling the timber shed for winter. I've recently loaned a friend's splitting mall. It's a beautiful vintage steel head here and he's after making a wonderful ash handle out of it. It's an absolute dream to use but unfortunately I'm going to have to return it when this fella comes looking for it in August. So I was out at an old summer show yesterday and I haggled someone down to 20 euro for this brand new splitting mall. And it's just a three foot long green splitting machine. Now any regular watchers of the channel will know that I'm not the biggest fan of plastic handles. I'm more of an ash man if I do say so myself. I have a nice piece of ash over there in the corner and I'm gonna work myself up a replacement handle for this fella that looks a little bit more like this fella. So a local wood seller was selling these really nice ash planks recently. So I picked up a few of them and here we're just placing down Michael's ax and using a pencil to trace out a rough copy of his handle. I really liked the way this felt while I was using it, so I said I'd try to replicate that as best as possible. The next thing I did was feed it through a bandsaw. I do try and use traditional hand tools as much as possible, and people always like to give out when I use the power tools. But what I'm experimenting with here is an idea I've had to start selling ash handle blanks. These would just be ash axe handles that have been cut to the right dimensions and the right thickness with the correct grain orientation, we'll touch off that later, ready to sell to a buyer who would shape it out themselves, round the corners and put on their own axe head, wondering where can they find local wood dealerships, a lot of people don't want to buy timber in large quantity just to make one axe handle, but also don't want to buy a store-bought varnished axe handle either. So I've started selling hatchet handle blanks at fairs and the likes of it recently. So I think in time I'd like to have a website set up where I'm selling these blanks along with instructions on how to turn them into a beautiful axe handle. So this is what I was on about earlier when I was talking about grain orientation. You want the growth rings of the wood parallel to the direction the axe head will be facing for the strongest possible handle. So with the ash blank ready, it was time to do some quick work on the head. The first thing I did was pop it out of the handle. I didn't have to cut it off or anything. It was only a friction fit, so I just tapped the bottom with the maul and it popped right out. I've never been a fan of paint on top of steel tools, so I took the wire wheel out and scrubbed off as much of that green paint as possible. I couldn't get what was left inside of the eye, but that didn't bother me. Once it looked like bare steel from the outside, I was pretty happy with it. Here we have it now. Still a bit of green paint inside the head, but there was nothing I can do about that. I'm sure you won't be able to see it anyway. I think it looks much nicer now, once we can keep the rust at bay. So with the head clean, it was time to continue work on the handle. Before I went rounding out any of them sharp corners, I decided I would cut the slit for the edge while it was easy to get everything nice and symmetrical. So I used the vernier calipers there just to measure out the halfway mark, and then I used the Japanese pull saw to cut that slit. While everything was still square, I extended this line the full way along the length of the shaft and that makes it easier for me to round everything in towards that center point without going too far and making it asymmetrical. With that done, it was time to start shaping. Up until very recently, I would have used a spoke shave to do all my rounding and shaping work, but recently I got a new tool, this fella here called a Shinto rasp. And ever since I've bought this tool, I seldom pick up my spoke shave anymore to round out my handles. It has two sides, one coarse for hogging off large amount of materials, and if you flip it around to the other side, it's got much finer teeth for giving you a nicer, smoother surface. It's essentially just a bunch of rip cut saws placed in a zigzag pattern. But you can see here, it's every bit as effective as it is satisfying to use. If I were to use just one tool to carve out this entire handle, it would be this fella. Obviously we move on to sandpaper later, but this fella is making round and out of these handles an absolute dream. I did use a draw knife here just to hug off the very rough corners. I could have done this with the Shinto rasp, but I found the draw knife makes life just a bit easier when you're getting started. Once I was happy with the rough shape the handle had taken, it was time to start working on where the head of the maul would be attached to the handle. So here I am again, using the Shinto rasp just to round this fella out. Now this was to be a loose fit. The actual head itself was tapered to fit the original handle, meaning it was narrower on the hole at the bottom of the eye than it was at the top. So when we first put it on, it looks incredibly loose, but later, once we wedge it, that'll all go away. I also made an impulse decision I would later come to regret. I said I would cut another slit. This one perpendicular instead of parallel to the direction of the mall. I thought it might give me a stronger joint, but as you'll see, it just kind of ends up looking messy. So here's how the handle looked once I was finished with the rasp. This meant it was time to move on to the sandpaper. So I have some 60 grit here and I just have it folded over on itself for a bit of strength. And I just rub that up and down the shaft, kind of removing any imperfections or blemishes or cuts that the rasp made. Uh, my shave horse is out of action at the minute, so I'm using my bench vise here. And I found the jaws of the vise kind of bite into the round shape of the axe. 
So as a solution to this problem, I found an old pillow here and I'm just shoving that in the vise first and then we can place the handle within the pillow and that kind of stops the jaws from biting into the wood and leaving ugly marks. I have a bastard file here as well, which is a file that has a flat face on one side and a round face on the other. I find that's very useful for shaping the parts where the head actually slots in, so that's what I'm doing here. Next, I sanded the handle up to 120 grit, anything higher than that, and I find the sawdust is so fine it clogs up the pores in the wood and it doesn't allow the oil to penetrate as good as it could. Next I moved over to the blacksmith's vice here where I was using a bit of beech here to cut out the wedges. This filler was to go into the slit we cut earlier to lock the head into the handle. I lost the lid to this bottle of glue over a month ago and still it hasn't solidified on me so we're just tapping it out here and we're going to use that on our wedge to keep it in place once we have it inside the handle. So I think I might have put the parallel wedge in too tight or too early because when I tried to put in the two smaller wedges that would be running perpendicular they just would not go in. After a bit of messing around we did get them to go in a few millimetres uh, but it was looking fairly ugly. I did come at it afterwards with the cross cut side of the Japanese saw just to see if I could cut everything nice and flush. After that I used the Shinto rasp and some sandpaper along with some glue to see if we could clean everything up. And all in all it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be but it was far from beautiful. But hey, this is a tool, not a decoration so we'll just drive on with what we have. Now it was finally time for my favourite part of any handle making, the application of the oil. Now again, up until recently, I was using linseed oil, boiled linseed oil to be specific, uh, to finish my handles. But recently Michael, the fella that made this splitting mall, suggested that I try some Danish oil. Five coats is what he recommended to begin with, so that's what I applied before using it. Followed by the standard once a day for a week, once a week for a month, once a month for a year, and then once a year after that. I don't think this process will ever get old, just watching the wood soak in that oil, making its grain pop and turning a slightly darker shade. There seems to be a common misconception about spilling malls is that they don't need to be sharpened ever. This isn't true at all. Once it gets dull enough that it starts bouncing off the wood instead of splitting it, it actually becomes a hazard. So it is important to keep some bit of an edge on it. Now this fella doesn't need to shave hairs like it is going to be abused, but it is important to keep it somewhat sharp. Now it was time for the only thing more fun than looking at the axe actually using it. So I drove down to somewhere nearby where there was a big pile of logs ready to be split or I'm not too sure what they were here for but I said I'd help myself anyway just splitting so we can see there now we have it propped up on two pieces of ash and that is a piece of sycamore there that I'm splitting with ease So there we have it lads, fairly happy with how this guy splits. Hopefully now I'll be able to give Michael his one back and uh, this fella should see us for a few winters. So I'm for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one. Good luck.